How many of you remember the era of shock TV? You know the shows. Gary Springer, Maury Povich, Steve Wilco, Geraldo Rivera, Jenny Jones. They were everywhere. Some began as daytime talk television, but most quickly devolved into shows meant to shock people, to draw in viewers. They were the clickbait of the television world, with episode titles like Viewers Respond to Some of the Most Outrageous Guests, and DNA Test This, Polygraph Test That, or Revealing Same-Sex Secret Crush. One of the most infamous shock TV episodes was a Jenny Jones episode that never aired. And that is because a mere three days after the episode was filmed, one of the guests would be in jail and the other would be facing a murder charge. Today we talk about the death of Scott Amador. Scott lived in Lake Orion, Michigan. He was 32 years old when he went on the Jenny Jones show as a guest on March 6th, 1995. He was a gay man who had a crush on a friend, Jonathan Schmitz, and he went on the show to reveal the crush to Schmitz, who was heterosexual. Producers did not tell Schmitz who the crush was when they invited him to participate in the taping, though they did claim that it would, could be a male or a female. Schmitz would claim that producers implied that it was a woman. As the episode opened, Scott was encouraged to share his feelings about Schmitz along with fantasies that he had about Schmitz. Schmitz was then brought on stage and the two men had an awkward embrace before Schmitz responded that he was definitely heterosexual. After the taping, the three guests involved in that segment, Scott, Schmitz, and a female friend of both men, returned to Michigan. Scott apparently left a suggestive note on Schmitz's front doorstep. When Schmitz found the note, he went to a bank, purchased a shotgun, and then went to Scott's trailer. He demanded to know if Scott left the note, to which Scott smiled. Schmitz went to his car, got the shotgun, and shot Scott in the chest twice, killing him. He then left the trailer, called 911, and confessed to what he had done. Defense lawyers would argue that Schmitz was manic depressive and had Graves' disease, and that combination caused him to commit homicide because he was humiliated, as they say, using a now mostly banned and debunked gay panic defense. He was convicted of second degree murder and sentenced to 25 to 50 years in prison. The first conviction was overturned on appeal and so there was a retrial. He was found guilty again and that same sentence reimposed. Scott's family filed a negligence suit against the Jenny Jones Show and companies associated with it. They believe that the Jenny Jones Show should have known that the episode would result in violence. They were awarded nearly $30,000, but that judgment was overturned on appeal. The Jenny Jones Show segment may have been done for viewers without much thought to the aftermath, they were found not negligent because what Schmitz did was not a reasonably foreseeable result of producing the segment. Reasonable foreseeability is a really important part of negligence law that says that folks can only be held responsible in negligence for those results that should be expected by a reasonable person. For example, if you put your garden sprinkler next to your neighbor's open window and leave it running all day, it is reasonably foreseeable that you will cause water damage to your neighbor's house, and you would be held liable for that. If you put your garden sprinkler on your back lawn away from the neighbor's property on a timer, and while you look away for just a moment to attend to your crying toddler, the trespasser comes along, disconnects the timer, and runs the hose through that same neighbor's open window, well, that's hardly something that a reasonable person could foresee. And you will probably not be held liable for that. Schmitz was paroled on August 22nd, 2017. And the lessons from all of this, these shows, distasteful as they may be, as embarrassing as they may be, are entertainment for those who want to watch them. Participants should well understand that they could be embarrassed. They could feel all kinds of emotions on such television programs. 
Any embarrassment you might feel will not excuse taking another person's life. Whether you're embarrassed, shamed, angered on television, or in your day-to-day -day life, in the end, you're responsible for your response in most cases. And Schmitz's response was well beyond anything that was reasonable in the circumstances. The law held him accountable. Until next Thursday. If you're enjoying these videos and want more, don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications so that you don't miss any videos. Thank you for watching. We really appreciate it.